guys, it's V. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I am back with another new build that I just finished. And so we're going to be doing a bit of a walkthrough and then I have done it like I did my last video. So um, as we go through, I've kind of spliced in some build footage that's going to show you how I made certain aspects of the build. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, let's do it. Let's keep going. And if you just want to see the build itself without me talking, again, you can skip to the end of the video. There is a showcase there. But um, this build, I really wanted to go for a very, very scrappy junkie. Obviously, you can see here. It's essentially a, a platform on stilts, and this is how I made it. Um, the platform itself is floating technically and I did that by putting you put a foundation a wall and a roof that's flat and then you can lift it up to remove the wall and the foundation and then put it back down to be flat and then you've got this floating platform so I just made a big square with these roof pieces and um, free cam mode came in quite handy during some of this even though uh, I still have a lot of difficulty with free cam mode. It's still, it's very, very helpful in certain situations. So I also used these scaffolding pieces and I decided for the like entry, I wanted to stagger them a little bit. I used the corner pieces and I made a little step there. There's actually one step in between those and then also a step going up into the house itself and then a ramp, obviously. Um, and you just have to check uh, to make sure that you can your character actually walks over the step that you've created because if it's too high, they will get stuck. So um, just test that out, it's pretty simple. And then for the underside, in order to make sure that it was supported, I used, again, these corner scaffolding pieces. So the whole idea here is just to really make this look like it's a completely supported structure, even though it's very much floating and those scaffolding pieces work really well but you could also use so many different items to just kind of like build up a bunch of clutter underneath and then on top of this platform i just placed a greenhouse dome and this is like the worst footage that i could have collected but that's fine um we did it i just put it up there and you just make sure that it's not hanging over the edges and just line it up and whatever and that works so i think this is a good moment to kind of talk about the story behind this build um as you can see there's just like a ton of junk piled up everywhere and hopefully it it is going to make sense as you kind of walk through this with me but um, this character that i built on is a little ghoul girl who is a scavenger she has been wandering the wasteland collecting everything that she loves and bringing it back to her home base uh, which is this house and i will get into that a little bit more as we go on but first we need to talk about this front porch area because um well we just do because i have footage of it so what i did here was i free placed a wall uh lined it up so that i would have this roof piece kind of hanging over the doorway and once I had it in the right position, I switched it to the slanted piece so that I could remove the wall because I didn't want it there. And then I could put it flat again. Um, and of course we had posts on the side because we want everything to be fully supported even though it's floating. And um, on the other side, I wanted to have a slanted piece that kind of came down to cover the other side of the porch. And uh, that was a little bit more tricky to do. As you can see here, I had to I had to add a foundation off to the side with a wall and a roof. And then I was trying to place the roof in that second spot the, the way that I needed it, but it wouldn't let me. And I couldn't figure out exactly what was causing the problem. And so I burned everything in the surrounding area and that worked. So <laughs> once I had it where I wanted it, I could repair this other roof piece and um, I flipped that one up to the slanted position and that allowed me to delete all of the extra stuff that I built off to the side and then I liked the way that it looked so I just added in some more posts to keep it supported because we like that and then for this extra little um, 
side piece. I didn't want to add another post and so I decided that a wall would also support it and so I used that blueprint to place a half wall and then I placed a little triangle piece on top of that although I wasn't sure if I wanted it there so I went around to the front and I almost turned a light on but then I decided no I don't need a light I like to work in the dark so that's what I did but I did put the triangle piece in there and I like how that looks um, I used those uh, destroyed roof pieces because they look super scrappy and I used that whatever that triangle piece is that has the little vines hanging off of it I don't know I just I love how cozy and cluttered this whole area looks you can see the step there and um, we've got trees we've got vines we've got like that fence there has the plants in it and um, you can see the retreat across the way there they're my neighbors and I kind of envisioned that like she maybe used to live over there, but she moved here to kind of have her own her own space and also like more space to, to keep um, collecting everything because she clearly loves to have all of everything everywhere. Um, that's the vibe in here is clutter, but like tasteful clutter, I think. She's got style. So for this garage door, um, originally I was going to just put like regular walls inside and kind of configure it in some way. I was working on that and then I realized what if I could put the garage door in there because it actually fits. And so I made a blueprint using the um, same technique that you use for the other walls and it works the same way. And um, I did destroy this dome. In order to put it in here but I don't actually think that you need to in fact I know that you don't need to destroy the dome to put this in here and one thing another thing that I will mention is that um, there were a couple times in the beginning where I had no problem destroying the greenhouse dome with the flame trap thrower flamethrower trap I don't remember what it's called but um, later on in the build at least two or three times my entire PlayStation crashed like not a blue screen but like a full went to black screen my PlayStation like shut down when I destroyed this greenhouse dome so I don't know what the problem is I think I might need to send in a bug report or something but um instead of telling you about that generator that I put in the dresser I decided to tell you about the crashing situation but uh I feel like it's worth it so that's that's fine but I did have to put that dresser on a rug in order to get it really close up against the wall because there is just a lot of collision issues with this garage door you'll see it's very difficult to place things next to it sometimes or underneath it especially so you might need to get a little creative with that but um, for the kitchen area I added a half wall so that I could have like a flat um, space to put all of my kitchen stuff next to and I destroyed the wall in order to try to get this um, stove kind of pushed back into it a little bit because it sticks out a lot and I couldn't do it from this position so I had to put it on a rug and then push the rug back so that it was lined up correctly and then you can see when I repair it it's just um, snug against the wall and then I added a little triangle piece to kind of just I, I don't know I wanted to and then um, you can see the conduit up there I I added a couple different conduits so that I could hang things down from it because it was just it was awkward with the, the way the dome kind of curves around so I included this uh, sink merge, not because I feel like it's particularly groundbreaking, because it's obviously not, but I included that one and a couple other merges in this video because I think that it's just a good example of um, small things really making a difference in your builds and like those little details. Uh, Yes, it's a pain to have to merge everything onto shelves and stuff like that, but it really does make a difference and it does make your build look very, um, not only unique, but also just very lived in and real. So that's just something to keep in mind. But for now, we're going to move on to the bedroom where the magic happens. I don't actually know how much magic happened here, but 
um, we are going to talk about this car bed that I've created. So I used um, sleeping bags. I merged the little couch down into the back to kind of be like a headboard slash pillow situation. Um, I did actually want to add in this idea that I saw from Lady H who has a really cool uh, custom bed video that I will link in the description. Um, she used this chair, like the desk chair, the orange one, as like a pillow on the on the top of a bed, and I really wanted to use that, but I didn't think of think of it until way after the fact, and everything was already built, and there was no way for me to really do it um, without destroying everything that I had already created. So I didn't do that, but it was a good idea. And uh, for some reason, these roof pieces just kind of snap right in over the, the, the garage, or I mean attached to the garage. And so I used the new clean ceiling piece because I think it looks nice. And I kind of just hope that everyone will overlook the fact that it's going through the glass. Um, I know I'm overlooking that. And as I'm talking, you can kind of see a couple different light merges that I'm doing. I used the cycling light inside of that uh, chandelier because I really love the chandelier. I just don't really enjoy the bright white light that it gives off. So I put my own light inside it. I used the red, like the darkest setting. And I used to use cycling lights a lot in my builds, um, and at some point I just stopped for some reason. I think part of it is that it's such a pain to have to wire them directly, and with that red light you can see that I kind of used this technique to make the wire go through the ceiling, so I didn't have to have the wire stretched all around. And um, this section right here is just going to be a bunch of different merges that I did. Uh, this one. Again, I don't like the bright, white, harsh light that comes from that lamp, but I love the lamp itself. I love the, the design of it. And so I just added a light that I do enjoy inside it. That little, um, it's actually a floor lamp, but it's tiny and it has a really nice orange glow. So I put that one inside the lamp and then this is a little merge that I actually added into my last build, but I didn't show, show it in the video specifically so I decided to show it in this video because why not and um, you can see the like nice purple glow um, from the cycling light up there and then this I don't really know why I turned it on if I wasn't gonna show what it looked like but <laughs> you can see it's really bright so um, yeah and then in a second here you're gonna actually see all of this at nighttime so that you get the full effect of the lighting um, that's probably one of the things that I work on the most is trying to get like a really nice even lighting like a glowy warm um, here you go you can just see it I can stop talking about it um, if I were to like go around and turn on every lamp that I have in here it would I promise you it would look disgusting it would look horrible so Lighting is really something that um, I work on personally a lot and uh, that that's a little tricky but once you kind of figure out what lights you like the most and then just stick with those, um, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But now we're going to kind of go outside and you can see some of the like landscaping and everything at night we've got some like glowy mushrooms down in the front that i was uh careful to not um like remove by placing items too close to them like a lot of these plants and the rocks and the things that are part of the landscaping um like in game those things will uh they will disappear if you place an object too close to it. So I just was really careful not to place anything too close. You can see the little glowy mushrooms there, that big rock. Those are just um, things that are in the, the world here. So I did add a bunch of plants and I kind of merged some of them into the ground. And you can see more of the exterior. And, 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 I can say and a few more times, I think. I don't know that I've said it enough. But as we walk around to the back, there's actually another uh, merge or two, I think, that I haven't shown yet. 
So this is kind of a weird one. Um, it's definitely a weird one, but I took this really long bench. I think it's called the crowd bench seat or something and I merged it down below a rug so that I could kind of hang it over the edge of this ceiling piece, this roof piece, because it was such a harsh white line and it would just, every time I walked to the back of the build, it just caught my eye, that white line and I didn't like it and so I wanted something to kind of cover it up and blend in this whole area and you can see that it really gives it this junky scrappy vibe that I was going for. I mean it kind of looks like somebody just maybe like nailed some boards up against that edge and uh, anything that I could do to make that white roof kind of stand out less was really important. So um, you can actually see up here I made it kind of a little seating area with a grill up there. And that just about wraps up our walkthrough, except I'm going to kind of give you a little aerial view of the build since we didn't really get that so far. Um, and I'll just kind of jump around in the junk so you can get a, a better view of that because I know that that's very, very important. But I did just want to quickly mention that I do plan on doing another Twitch stream very soon, so if you would like to follow me over there at Vapid Valentine and hang out with us in the chat, I'm sure it will be super fun, super fun, and you can also follow me um, on Instagram at Vapid Valentine. <laughs> So for anybody who has made it this far, I would love to say thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you and I hope that you have a lovely everything.